coming week, uh, Monday evening at Lyman Hall uh, Elementary, which is very close here, and we have some connections there with folks. Uh, we are, uh, there's going to be, you may have seen something in the paper about other schools and so on that are going to be having a prayer for the kids and the teachers and so on. So tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., right after the uh, open house that they're having, if you'd like to go over there, they're going to meet around the flagpole and they'll be having a prayer uh, for the kids and for the teachers, uh, probably not just for Lyman Hall, but I would suspect maybe for all the kids uh, that are going back to school this week. So that's a great thing. So uh, if you'd like to join, be there just a little bit before 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. Men's breakfast is every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. at Hertz in Oakwood. Uh, of course, our Bible class is on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, Bible class is Sunday morning at 9.30 and we're at 10.30. 30. Uh, ladies Bible class will be this Thursday night at uh, 6 p.m., 6 to 8 p.m., and that's in the fellowship hall the other end of the building. I uh, want to note that uh, Sienna Enoch won a cert or was awarded a certificate for the second mile, which is uh, from the scripture in, in the Beatitudes when it talks about if someone compels you to go one mile, go with them the second mile. And so for, for great service, she's done uh, a really good job there. And there's a, a little flyer or poster, or I don't, whatever you want to call it, that's in the... Uh, uh, the uh, foyer there, and if you'd like to look at that, she was one of four students, I think it was, that received that award for her school. So, um, also this morning we have we've had several families recently that have been visiting with us, and we like we're very pleased to announce that they they would like to uh, to identify with the congregation here. Uh, Tom and Pam Hertel, and I think I got that right. If they'll raise their hands, if you have not met them, please do so. We're glad to have them with us. They they just moved here. Uh, and then Charles and Nikki Bicebay, did I get it right? Okay. And their sons, Kalian, Julian, and Tristan, and a very delightful family, and we're just uh, excited to have them as well. So please welcome them. I guess I didn't get you to raise your hand, but they're, they're all here on the front row. <laughs> so that way, if you didn't meet them, uh, you, you definitely want to, and we're excited to have them here as part of the, part of the group at Atlanta Road. So let's go to our Father in prayer, if you would. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this day and we're thankful for every blessing that you provide for us. Too many blessings that we probably just fail to even recognize, but we know that you do provide for us. Father, we ask that you will be with us today as we go through this service, that we will be able to worship you with our minds free from the cares of this world, that we'll be able to, uh, to lift our voices in song, that we will uh, fellowship with one another and encourage one another and uplift one another as we have the opportunity to do so, that we might relieve the burdens of, of others if, if there are those that, that are having struggles right now, that we might do something to be able to help them, Father. We pray that you forgive us for uh, the, the things that we do wrong and pray, Father, that you will always help us and, and, and give us the strength and the courage to do, the, do what is right uh, as we walk through this life every day. We pray these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Our next song is
will pray with me as we uh father god we thank you for this day father we thank you for the chance to meet together as your church father in this place father we pray this morning for your church all over the world for the christians and believers who've met together to love one another and to glorify your name to sing praises to you father and to read from your scriptures to share and reflect and to love and to change father we thank you for these things father we pray for our nation and as we think of our nation this morning we know that there are great struggles and there is turmoil in places all across our land father there are people hurting and there are families that are suffering today because they've lost the greatest treasure in their lives and father we pray that you bring peace we father we, we pray that you'd bring healing in their lives father we pray that you'd raise up in this nation men and women like you've done in the past to lead and to bring an awareness that it's not just goodness that we need but that it's redemption Father, that it's not just good behavior that changes the way things happen in this world, but it's the forgiving and the loving and the redeeming nature of God that changes things ultimately. Father, we pray that you would be with our leaders. We pray that you would be with, our, with those who are serving our country, whether it's in this land or another, in our military. Father, those who've chose to give their lives to a life of service father we just pray that you'd be with them and you and you, that you would bless them for giving and sacrificing we pray, pray that you'd bless their families as well father we think is of this of this town and in this community that we're in father we pray that you would make us an example that our lives father would be examined by those around us and that people would see the authenticity within us. Father, we pray that we can make a difference in this, in this town. Father, we pray because there are needs here locally. And there are people who are hurting here in this place. Father, I pray that you would use us as your church to heal, to apply the balm of Christ in the wounded lives all around us. Father, I pray for the leaders of this church. Father, that they, would, that they would be completely mindful of the things that you would have for them to accomplish. Father, that we would be in step with, you, with your will. That the things that we do in this place will honor you. And that, Father, we're working hard and diligently to see your will be done. Father, I pray for those leaders. Help guide them and help them to make the difficult decisions. Father, I pray for us as a church that we would be one that we will be one together, that we don't argue and fight over differences of opinions and differences of ideas. Father, I pray that it's not intolerance of one another, but that it's just us working together and finding a commonality among the differences, whether it's the way we speak, Father, whether it's the way we look or the color of our skin. Father, we love you because in you, you've made us all one. You've made us all one. And this morning we pray and we sing and we praise to your name. We pray that it's an honor to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
morning. We're going to talk today a little bit about some of the accomplishments of uh, some of our students that we've had. Jacob's going to talk about that. And going with that theme, I thought, well, when we're celebrating the Lord's Supper and we're coming around that, trying to compare a love of a parent for a child and thinking of that. For the ones of us that are parents, there's probably almost nothing that we would do for our children or grandchildren. If they needed something, if they were hungry, we would go without food for them. If they needed, you know, if we needed some clothes or they needed school clothes, we would go without so we could provide for them. I think we would all do that because of the a love that we have. I'm here to confess today, I don't understand the love that God has for us and the love that Jesus has for us that they would make the sacrifice that was done. It's, it's hard for me to, I, I can't comprehend that. I try, I've been trying for years to, to understand it, but, but I don't. I don't fully understand. The closest I think I can get to is the love of a child. What would I be willing to do for a child or a grandchild? Now that we get older and we have grandchildren, and, you know, I hate to say it, guys, but grandchildren are really a lot more special. Because uh, they get to go home back to their parents. That's why it's so much special. Don and I are going to get to have four for a week. So I already know what the end results that's going to be. It's going to be like, bye, love you. Uh, but, you know, saying that and trying to have a little fun there and a jest, but, but we love them. We love them, and, and that deep love is there. But to sacrifice a grandchild or to sacrifice a child, I, that's, that's love beyond what I have. I, I just don't fully understand that. But that was done for us. That was done for us. God did that with Jesus. Jesus made that sacrifice, and he asked to have that burden go away. But for the love of us, he was willing to make that sacrifice. And so we're going to celebrate that love today. Jesus put in effect the Lord's Supper so that we could remember that love. And so as we try to strive and to have that love, let's think back about how much love that was done there for us. Um, so let us go to God in prayer and try to remember what was done for us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father in heaven, we're so happy that we can be here on this Lord's Day, the first day of the week, where that you've instituted this Lord's Supper, this memorial service. Father, as we take this bread, which represents the body of Jesus on that cruel cross, let us remember the sacrifice that was done for us as we partake. Father, we pray that we do this in a manner that's pleasing to you. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father in heaven, we're thankful for this fruit of the vine. It represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on that cruel cross of Calvary. Fathers, we take this, let us remember the love and the sacrifice that was done for us. Father, let's do this in a manner that's pleasing to you. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. At this point in time, the Lord's Supper is complete. Just as a matter of convenience, we're going to have an offering and collection. Uh, this is for members only. Um, if you'd like to give, if you're a visitor, that's great, but you're not obligated in any way whatsoever. And for our members, we ask that people give with a cheerful heart, uh, just as the New Testament church did. Uh, we don't send around a little packet. We don't ask you to make a, a tithing pledge, or we don't ask you to do anything like that. It's All of it's done on an individual basis. You give as you've been prospered, as, as a way that you feel like that you need to give. And uh, I think that's a wonderful thing that we're able to do those things. We've been blessed in so many ways. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father in Heaven, we're thankful that uh, we have these facilities that we can gather and meet. We're thankful that we have this opportunity that we can give back financially but father also that we give back of our time and father as we do things in the community or whatever we know that by working together and things that all the glory goes to you none to us 
Father, we've been blessed in many ways, and we want to thank you for this land that we live in. We want to thank you for jobs. We want to thank you that for our families that work together. Father, we also want to thank you for the men and women in uniform service that are throughout this world that uh, give us the safety and security so that we can exercise our freedoms. Thank you so much, Father, for the gifts that you've given us. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. get set up here real quick. It is a pleasure and an honor to come up and to share some of God's word with you this morning. Um, This is always one of my favorite uh, sermons to come up and preach and one of my favorite times to come up and preach because we get to recognize some of our graduates um, and also I get to update everybody on some of the things that the youth group's doing and has done over the summer. Um, Really quick, we're going to actually this is in the works and we're, we're in the planning stages, uh, but we're actually going to do a combined service. 
uh, in a couple of weeks uh, with the Hispanic congregation. Um, and we're going to recognize our high school graduates. They're going to come up here. Uh, they get a Bible, and we're going to have the elders pray over them. Uh, but really quick, I want to just uh, recognize them for a second. Uh, Caleb Davis actually graduated from UNG, um, and he's already got a job lined up with one of the local hatcheries. Um, and I think as soon as they get back from vacation, he's going right to work. So he, uh, he did it right. <laughs> Uh, his girlfriend, Kaylee Brewer, also graduated from UNG. She graduated in May. Um, our high school graduates, we have Dylan Davis, uh, graduated from West Hall. He also dual enrolled uh, with UNG, and I believe if he doesn't have all of his first two years completed, he's almost got a complete two years completed. Uh, but he's, he's pretty close to having two years. Um, Iris Roaches. She also graduated from West Hall. She is she has actually got a modeling career going on, um, and she's going to continue to pursue that, as well as look into business schools. And then Angel Olvera uh, graduated from West Hall, and he's kind of in the same boat as Dylan is. Uh, he completed his first two years of college through dual enrollment. Uh, he is going to be going to the University of Georgia and studying avian biology. And then after he graduates from the University of Georgia. He's going to go back to the University of Georgia and join the VET program, I and mean, he's going to go that route. So he's, uh, he's got a lot going for him. We've also got a couple of other college graduates that I want to recognize. We have Laura Butler. Uh, she completed her degree in paralegal studies and law. Um, we also have, help me remember, there was one more. I know, I know you. My wife, Jordan, also completed her master's. Um, uh, that, that actually helped me out. No, she completed her master's in curriculum and instruction at Georgia Southern University. And then Mark Iannacone actually received his master, his, his MBA uh, from Georgia Southern University as well. Um, so if you see these people, uh, if you see them around, give them a hug, give them a pat on the back because student loans are a bummer. And just let them know that you're proud of them. Uh, that it's a great achievement and a great thing that they've done and completed uh, high school, college, whatever the case may be. Um, <clears throat> like I said, this is, this is a fun time for me because I get to kind of recap the summer. And I've got a few pictures. Um, I didn't warn the youth group about this, that I was going to use some of the pictures they sent me. Um, <clears throat> we did a lot of really great things this summer as a youth group. Uh, I know last summer we did a mission trip in Nashville, and that was fantastic. And we stayed, we stayed in Georgia this year. Um, but I think as a youth group, we probably grew even closer together uh, than ever before. Um, there were a couple of things that were new that, that really surprised me with how well uh, they, they took off with the group. One thing that Mike had mentioned one time, we're teaching our kids how to read the Bible and drink coffee at the same time. Uh, Jesus and Java was something that I just kind of thought up uh, before the summer started. And I was thinking Tuesday morning Bible study, Dunkin' Donuts. We've got a lot of, you know, high school girls. They love to drink Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. Why not? You know, um, we did that every Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday that we could, every Tuesday that we were in town. And it really, it really took off. We started, uh, I think we started with maybe four. Um, and then one of the last ones, uh, yeah, we actually started with one. My bad. The second one we had four. Um, and I think at the last one we had seven or eight um, that showed up. And <laughs> usually when we're done with summer events, we have to wait until the summer goes back or w until we get back into the summer to, to bring it back up. But... I was actually asked if we could continue Jesus in Java uh, during the school year as like a Saturday morning thing. And I, as long as they want to do it, absolutely no problem. Uh, we're going to figure out a schedule for that. Um, another thing that we did, and it was really an excuse for me to go fishing and just kind of have the kids there with us, um, we did Fishers of Men. And so what we did is, and it wasn't just for the guys, the, the, the ladies were more than welcome to join. Uh, but we would, we actually went to Clark's Bridge more than anything, more than anywhere else. Um, but we would go fishing, 
and we'd actually have a Devo as a group. Not everybody fished. Some people brought their hammocks. Some people fell out of their hammocks. <laughs> um, but we, we had a great time, and it's something that we'll probably pick up next year as well, too. Uh, Camp Watoga was a great success, as you've heard. We, uh, we took a hike. Um, I can't even remember where we took a hike to. Preacher's Rock. And we got lost um, because I took a wrong turn. So I take all the blame for that. Um, but we took, we took a hike, and we had a Devo. Uh, we, we talked a little bit, and uh, just we, we, we had a lot of fun as a youth group. Uh, we did do two, session, two sessions of Children's Church um, over the summer, and we focused on communion. And what we did is the, the first session we did, we made communion bread. And it would have worked a lot better if I had an oven here, but by the time I got it home, it was so stringy and, and the glutens had already developed and all this other stuff, it just didn't come out right. So we were going to use the communion bread and use it in communion, but it, trust me, no go. Um, but then the second time, uh, the second session, we actually made grape juice, and we, we explained what the grape juice represented, and we, we talked through uh, everything about communion and helped them understand what communion actually meant. Um, so it, it's great to see our kids and, and great to see our youth step up in the congregation and step up and be leaders in this congregation and, and help out the younger ones and to, to be those examples uh, that we want them to be and kind of expect them to be. Um, <coughs> but whenever I, I, I think about all the stuff that we do as a youth group, and I think about my position here as the youth minister, there's one thing that, that drives me to continue doing the work that I do in the capacities that I do them. Not only do I work with the youth here at Atlanta Road, um, but I'm also a parapro, and I work with different students in the West Hall area. And then I'm also a football coach, and I work with the football team with West Hall, and helping out with students there. And there's one thing that drives me more than anything else, and I've preached on it before. I know Rodney's used it before, because uh, he stole it from me. Yeah. <laughs> Be who you needed when you were younger. This, this is the one statement that drives me. Because I needed an example when I was younger. I had plenty of examples out there, and I had plenty of people that led me in the right direction. But there were some times in my life where I was missing an example. And there were some times in my life where I did struggle to make the right choices. And I want to make sure that I'm there for these kids, for, for, for these kids, for, for any kids in the West Hall community. In any, any way that I am uh, working or participating, I want to make sure that I'm there in that role for them when they need me. I'm definitely not in this for, for the money and the fame. Uh, I, I, I don't hold two places of employment to work with younger kids because I like conversations and confrontations with parents. But it's all about the kids and making sure that they have a chance. Making sure that they have a chance to grow, uh, to share, to, to love, and to become someone great. And when I think about that, I can't help but go into scripture. And one relationship in the Bible that I love to, to study and, and focus on is the relationship between Paul and Timothy. Um, if you don't know, Paul and Timothy, uh, Paul is going on all these different missionary trips and he's helping to establish these churches and he's making sure that they're doing the right things. <clears throat> and Timothy was one of Paul's helpers. Uh, a major helper, in, in, in my opinion. But just to give a little bit of background on Timothy, Timothy, uh, his mother was Eunice, uh, who was a Jew that converted to a Christian, and she changed. Uh, she converted while Paul was on a missionary trip, um, and his father was actually a Gentile. In Acts chapter 14 and verse 6, we hear of 
Paul, and he's actually going through the city of Laconia. Uh, and, and this is actually the city in which Timothy and his family live. That's where Timothy grew up at. And when Paul is going through Laconia, uh, he actually uh, is spreading the gospel. And so this is where uh, Paul kind of comes in contact with Timothy and where we see their relationship begin. Um, and we can kind of assume that this is where Timothy knew that he was destined for ministry. Timothy ends up going with Paul and goes on different missionary journeys with Paul and, and helps Paul out in different capacities. <clears throat> and in both 1st and 2nd Timothy, 1st uh, and 2nd Timothy both being uh, considered pastoral letters of Paul, but uh, Paul writes both of these letters to Timothy. And in 1st Timothy, 1st Timothy is more of a honey-do list. Uh, it's more of, hey, Timothy, you're in Ephesus now, and I need you to do this, 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 and this. And, you know, the church, the, we need elders here. This is what elders need to look like. We need deacons here. This is what deacons need to look like. <clears throat> um, and then in 2 Timothy, it's more of, more of an encouragement to Timothy and a thank you to Timothy as we read through it. But in both of them, we can really see the relationship between Paul and Timothy in the, very, in the first two verses of both. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, it begins, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true child in the faith, breaks mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Jesus, and that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, Paul is not Timothy's dad, but he considers him like a child in the faith. There are a lot of relationships in this congregation that can also fit under that category. I have grandmothers here that are not really my grandmothers. I have moms and dads here that are not really my moms and dads. I have brothers and sisters here that are not really my brothers and sisters. But they mean that much to me that I call them that. This is the same situation here. Timothy means so much to Paul that Paul calls him his child. Paul has spent so much time with Timothy up to this point that he calls Timothy his child. <clears throat> and so in 1 Timothy, we see a lot of instruction. And, and Timothy was charged to go to Ephesus. He was told to, to go and help establish the church there correctly and to, to rid the church of false teachings and, and, uh, <clears throat> and establish elders and deacons and it can really seem like a daunting task. Uh, we, we talked about it in the, in the youth group this morning. It's like as if I was to go, or I'll use the example I used. Let's take Malia, who's not very well-versed in the kitchen, we'll say. Okay? It's like as if Malia was going to go to Atlanta to some five-star chef and walk in his kitchen and say, you're doing that wrong. It's actually done this way. Or it's like if Cooper went up to an NBA team and went up to their head coach and saying, you're running their offense wrong. It, it, it's completely wrong. This is how it needs to be done. It's a daunting task. It's, it, it, I, I'm not going to go up. It, it's, it's really scary for me to go up to our elders and say, hey, we're not doing this right. It's really scary to go up to one of your one of your elders, not just in the church, but in, in, in life, and say, hey, you haven't been doing this right for years. This is actually how it needs to be done. But this is exactly what Paul is asking Timothy to do. But in the midst of all of this, in the midst of, hey, we need, we need deacons here, we need elders here, these are the qualifications, you know, I want you to establish an elder, even though you don't even fit the qualifications for an elder yourself. I want you to make sure that we're establishing deacons the right way, even though you don't fit the qualifications of a deacon. I want you to call these people out 
because they're being false teachers. And I find it funny, in, in 1 Timothy, Paul actually gives two names, like he's just really throwing shade at these two people, like he, y'all are doing it all wrong. <clears throat> but in the midst of all that, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 12, there's this, there's this piece of encouragement that Paul gives to Timothy. He says, let no one despise you for your youth. Let no one look down on you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Let no one despise you. Let no one look down on you. Just because you don't fit the qualifications of an elder doesn't mean that you don't know what's right. Just because you're younger, just because you're not as established as they are, just because you haven't been doing this for years and years on end, doesn't mean that you can't do it the right way. Doesn't mean that you can't be the example. This is, a, you can ask the youth group, this is a verse that I pull at least six times during the year and talk about. Because even though you feel like you're not qualified enough to go in and, and, and be a leader and to, to lead a congregation or to lead a group, don't say that just because you're young or inexperienced but set the example that you know needs to be made. 2 Timothy is, is addressed more to Timothy. 1 Timothy, like I said, is more instruction. In 2 Timothy, we look at it, and it's more instead of, hey, Timothy, do this, it's, hey, Timothy, I really appreciate you doing all these things, and let me give you these words of encouragement to keep you going. Paul tells Timothy things like, don't be ashamed of the word. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord nor, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He also tells Timothy that he needs to be that soldier for Christ. In chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is, is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the, it is the, the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crop. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. He also tells Timothy that he needs to present himself as a worker approved for God. Remind them of these things and, and charge them before God not to quarrel about words which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will, it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. And their tasks, their, their talk, will spread like gangrene. He tells Timothy that he needs to flee youthful passions. If we continue on in verse 22, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servants must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. And then finally, Paul tells him that he needs to be ready in all seasons to share the gospel. In chapter 4, verses 1, one through 5, I, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead, and, and by, his, by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. 
They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. When I read through First and Second Timothy and I look at the relationship between Paul and Timothy, is this not the relationship that we need to be looking to have with our youth here at Atlanta Road? My, my goal, my, my, my objective, the, the things that I do all to, f f to uh, fulfill that statement, to be the person that I needed when I was younger, all of those things can be accomplished if I look to be the Paul to these Timothys. I want to encourage and I want to push them to leadership in the congregation and out of the congregation. To spread the gospel and to be ready in all season. To flee youthful passion and to pursue God and to not be ashamed of their faith in Christ. This doesn't just need to be my objective. This doesn't, this, this doesn't just need to be my objective for the youth group. It needs to be our objective for the youth group. It takes a village. These, the, 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 the few that we mentioned that graduated, they got there because of the village around them. These that sit in the front row and the little ones that sit throughout the pews, they're going to end up on that screen one day as a graduate. And they're going to move on to bigger and better things and great things because of the village around them. Because we were able to be the Paul to their Timothy. It's hard to be that, though. It's hard to be that kind of role model. It's hard to be that kind of encouragement if you can't even say, that you're doing these things yourself. If you can't say that I, if you, if you say that I am ashamed, or if you say that I can't rightly handle the word of truth, or if I can't do those things that you just listed out, Jacob, then clearly there's something there that we need to work on. <clears throat> I meant to show this before I got into that. But this this is what we do it for. This is, this is everything to me. This, this is why I get up in the morning. And whenever I lay my head down at night, I'm able to say that I did everything that I could for this group because that's what God pushes me to do. And I hope and I pray that that's something that God pushes you to do as well. I do want to encourage you today, if you're not in the right way, if you need help, if you need help getting back on the right track, if you want to be involved in the youth of this congregation, if you want to help them be on the right path and get on the right track, if you want to be that Paul for them, then I want you Come forward and to, to make those needs known. I, I want you to let the congregation know if you're in need of help, if you're in need of prayers, or if you need to put on Christ in baptism this morning. I invite you to come down as we stand and as we sing.
Let us pray. Dear Lord God Almighty, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come together here to worship you and sing praises to you. Thank you for the freedom that we have to come here together and not be worried about being persecuted. We thank you for our military who ensures that every day and risks their life for us. Dear Lord, we thank you for our youth and their achievements. We thank you for allowing us to be part of their lives, to encourage them, help us to encourage them to be an example and um, help us to be an example to them, to love God as a priority and not ever to be ashamed of their faith. Please, dear Lord, we thank you for Jacob and all his hard work. And um, please help us to be with our youth and to always encourage them to go the right way and to always be a good example to others. Dear Lord, as we leave here today, take, help us take the things that we've learned and to apply them to our lives and to be an outreaching hand to the community and to show the Lord your, the, or the world your love. Dear Lord, please be with those who are sick spiritually and physically that cannot be with us today. Amen.